like to remind you folks that the Big Missouri Valley Barn Dance Gang will be making its way out toward White River, South Dakota, on Friday, October the 20th, for a big show and a dance. You folks out there in White River, in and around White River, keep that date in mind. October the 20th for the Big Missouri Valley Barn Dance Gang, playing in your town. Showtime along about 8.15. It was an, an idea that wasn't necessarily just a WNAX idea, you know, it is something that became popular, but I think it became popular because especially, you know, 1944, you're just coming off of the Great Depression, and you're just coming off of World War II, or still kind of in World War II, and through the, the, the harder years, gurneys uh, and WNAX were kind of um, your pal to help you through. All the good old hearts and buggy days. They had a cast of uh, live musicians that played regularly at the station pretty much seven days a week. But what they would do is they'd load up everybody in a bus on a Saturday and head out to some small town, play a live show there Saturday night, head back to Yankton, and then Sunday afternoon they'd do the Sunday afternoon get-together. They'd go to a town like Burke. Well, in those days, Burke had one long-distance phone line available, and they broadcast a show live on the station on Saturday night using that phone line. Well, the deal they'd make with these towns is, okay, you can use it, but if there's an emergency, we're going to cut in. For them to broadcast, uh, the only way that they could do this remote broadcasting was via this box phone. Uh, it's almost something like you see that they would have, they were using um, during the wars. The Missouri Valley guys would come in, and if the community agreed, of course, they would come in and they would climb up the telephone pole with a wire and they would tap into the telephone line uh, on, on the top of the pole, run that back down to the, the uh, portable phone, and then they would dial up to the radio station, and there you go, and they'd play. Was my gal a lot of those areas didn't have electricity. Uh, they'd have a battery-powered radio, which is how they heard the radio, um, and it was a lot of hard work. There wasn't a lot of fun time, so the Saturday night in town was a big deal. Most towns then, that's when folks went to town to shop. That's when they got together, uh, the rural folks especially. So the Saturday night get together, the Missouri Valley Barn Dance coming to town would be a big deal. I mean, it would be like a, a rock show coming to your town now. Happy Jack O'Malley was one of those that would go out. Uh, George B. German, he was the, the singing cowboy type of thing. Horace Wynn was there as a celebrity and a, and a performer, and they had a lot of other announcers and just local performers. At the time, these were pretty big stars. They did public appearances. Uh, I think I've shown you some photographs of uh, the ranch girls. They had their car with WNEX and the ranch girls emblazoned on the side. Uh, and they'd have contests, too. Uh, they would have, they'd be giving away cars or they'd give away a sum of money. Lloyd Reedstrom, an announcer at WNAX known as Lloyd Grant, created a character called Grandpa Winpenny, who hosted the Missouri Valley Barn Dance. Reedstrom would announce the news and musical acts for the live event and then go backstage and transform into Grandpa Windpenny. I think Dad always liked being around crowds and I, he, I think he really enjoyed performing. Uh, I believe Grandpa Winpenny was a, a character that uh, he formed from perhaps a lot of people that he met in his career, early career, for example, uh, the first generation immigrants that, uh, that uh, he knew from his family and his family's friends. When he went public, you wouldn't recognize him as he'd, he'd have this big white beard. Uh, he'd have a, a beaten up old hat on. Uh, usually a flannel shirt or, or over, a bib overalls. And I think part of his job was not only as an announcer for the barn dance, he would uh, be part of the crowd to warm up the audience. The people that they were hearing on WNAX were, they were just the best of the best for them. And they were, um, and they were more than just musicians to them. They were um, an opportunity to connect they almost felt like I think like they were friends. To see them I think had to have been kind of maybe a little bit of um, 
little starstruck, but I think there was also a lot of, this is my friend. This is somebody that I stop and listen to and, and connect with all the time because there was nobody else around. The barn dance era on WNAX lasted through the mid-50s, but with changing times, more radio stations starting up, and a thing called rock and roll sweeping the nation, the traveling radio barn dance faded into memory. The new century has seen a resurgence of music in communities across the plains. New music venues continue to appear in communities large and small, and are bringing people together. Here in Yankton, we're on Tuesday and Thursday nights. Uh, Tuesday nights here at the Bandshell and Thursday nights at the uh, at the Meridian Bridge at the foot of that old historic bridge. They've got concerts every Thursday. And Rapid City built the downtown square now just, you know, largely for around music. So I think that's what you're finding today in communities. Uh, once again, people are just looking for ways to connect with their neighbors and maybe with social media and the online world and everything and the fast-paced world that we live in. It's, uh, it's, not, di it's not geographic distance so much as it is um, you know, digital separation. And, and, and again, maybe music is the answer to bringing people together or, uh, across that digital divide. Oh,